All right, so we are here in Silicon Slopes. And the reason we're here is in the office behind me that's labeled Oracle is actually the uh, contact address for New Lane University. And uh, New Lane University is a, uh, a subscription model higher education program that is competency-based and uh, linked to, well, I think it's, it's gonna be linked to blockchain. The founder of this uh, organization, initially it was called Teacher, but with a U-R, T-E-A-C-H-U-R, and then it changed into New Lane University, but the, among the founders was Ben Blair, and Ben Blair is the current president of the Mormon Transhumanist Association. So I think that's Im important, not just for the knowing about the competency-based education model and blockchain, which he had written about um, blockchain in higher education in 2018 for Inside Higher Education, but also the transhumanist part, because I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the global brain. But in the meantime, uh, New Lane University, I'll just give you a few details. It's a subscription model program that's somewhat limited. It has two options, an associate's degree and a bachelor's degree. The bachelor's degree is only in philosophy, which is an interesting choice. Um, the associate's degree has a few more options. You pay monthly, I think it's about $40 a month plus supplies, but predominantly it's a, a mastery-based model, so they have learning objectives for the courses. and. Mostly it's sort of you teach yourself and in coordination with some mentors, but it's all online learning and they have curated resources and then you are supposed to show, to complete the course, pass an exam and then have an interview with a mentor or one of the advisors for the program that shows that you have met mastery for the, the requirements of the course. So that is the setup. It's supposed to be, you know, it's, it's honestly, it's very reasonably priced. I think the associates is around $1,500 and the bachelor's is maybe up to 3000 and that's the max, like you're never gonna pay more than that. And to me, I think that this price point, from what I can see, coincides with the idea of probably a future where a lot of people who are put out of work are put on universal basic income and that something like this $40 a month would be debited out of your account as sort of a requirement for online learning. Maybe if you're you know, in a pool to get some sort of public assistance, you have to show that you are um, you know, bettering yourself and that online a competency-based model, you know, at that point it probably won't be an associate's or bachelor's anymore. It'll be just some sorts of stackable credentials. But I can see how this low-cost online learning model would feed into both the UBI and the social impact investing. So I think it's really important. Um, New Lane is it's probably a very small model and the way these things work is they get the small models, they work out the kinks and then they go to the bigger model. So I w I'm, I'm interested in that both um, New Lane and Western Governors uh, University are both here in the Salt Lake region. Now Western Governors goes way back um, to the mid 1990s. Uh, they originally started thinking about it in 1995 and then it was launched officially in 1997 and it, it covered about 19 states. And these were online higher education programs. Again, mastery-based education programs that were primarily limited in what the offerings were. They were aligned with business, uh, IT, information technology sector, and then later they developed degree programs in teacher training and healthcare training, which is really interesting because both of those are areas that are increasingly about incorporating data analytics uh, and um, AI learning and um, you know, human capital investing, both of those areas. So at this point, um, as of two, a couple years ago, over 160,000 people had gotten degrees from Western Governors. Now, it's still smaller than some of the other online programs like um, Southern New Hampshire University, which is huge, their online component, but it's pretty big in the space. And um, it's back, it's, it's, um, it ran afoul a, f a number of years ago in terms of uh, the credentialing with, uh, that it, it wasn't meeting its standards for the amount of time that students were supposed to have direct access to instructors. But eventually the Department of Education just came back and said, well, we know, we know it's fine. We're just gonna go with it anyway. So there's quite a bit of push from the lobbying sector to allow these uh, online learning courses with uh, competency and mastery to move forward. Because in the future, the future of labor is going to be ongoing perpetual reskilling this lifelong learning anywhere, anytime learning that is on blockchain. And so, you know, nothing was gonna get in the way of that. Um, even if you had an audit that said it didn't meet the requirements. Now, the advisory board uh, for Western governors includes 
a lot of industry interests, you know, the Gates Foundation, AT&T, Google, Microsoft, these are all the players who are advising this online university. And um, I found it interesting, uh, their uh, mascot is the uh, sage night owls. So the owl is very symbolic in that. And um, recently they uh, joined with Carnegie Mellon University to come up with sort of AI applied learning. Now I, I touched, I think a little bit on that at one of our last sites that the way online learning works in terms of learning curated playlists of online learning content, whether that's red content, video content, audio content, um, or potentially in the future, not too distant future, it's going to be virtual reality content uh, delivered through glasses or um, you know VR headsets or augmented reality glasses. This content is going to be captured through XAPI technology and put in your learning locker, and that's going to be what verifies your credentials and your mastery competencies. Um, they decide what information you get next based on what the cognitive model of your mind says. You know, and it, it's going to learn you and it's going to learn what it thinks you need next. And so then there's a lot of questions I think about who has autonomy in this situation as increasingly our access to learning is online. And you know, education has always been about training people up to fit into society, right? And now the new society is increasingly a post-human society, a digital society, a society where by 2050, you know, according to the Japan Moonshot Project, they want us to live as holograms predominantly or to project our consciousness into robots and live that way. That's the world. And so it's no surprise that the educational system is going to be aligned with that. So I would say, you know, it's I haven't proven it, but I, I would think that there would be some synchronicity between the New Lane University model, which is limited, and it's sort of a small test bed to get the hook kinks out with blockchain aligned education in a certain way. And then those lessons would then be applied to a bigger scale platform like Western Governors. Now, um, I will say the other thing about Blend, 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 Ben Blair of New Lane, which is the smaller program. Uh, that, you know, again, he's the head of the Mormon Transhumanist Association, and he got his PhD uh, in education uh, technologies and theories of education from Columbia University. Now, Columbia University is the origins of the technocracy movement, industrial engineering. The teacher's college has always been aligned with sort of social progressivism, but increasingly I'm finding out that it's leaning into the sort of the Fabian left eugenics-based social progressivism. So it's sort of like we know society better and we are going to engineer it to our purposes to uplift, you know, the, the unwashed masses sort of thing. And so that he came out of Columbia uh, University. He worked for a time for K-12. I think now K-12 is known as Stride. But at the time that K-12 was launched, it was launched by a banking firm. This is a predominantly online education program for K-12. And the major backers in that were uh, Michael Milken and his brother Lowell Milken and also Larry Ellison of Oracle, <laughs> right? So Ben Blair is coming out of the online education space already before he's entering into the higher education space and then dabbling on the side in transhumanism. Now his courses, the philosophy courses, and they're quite broad, uh, but do include uh, course offerings in the philosophy of transhumanism and the philosophy of metaphysics. So, um, you know, I think there's, there's a lot going on you know, to think about. And I'm just going to close with a little bit of background. So this is a long project I've been working on for the past month is looking into something that strangely goes back at least to the 1940s, post-World War II, or like ongoing World War II cybernetic era. And it's this idea that's grounded in uh, information uh, systems theory applied to social systems that was advanced by uh, a systems theorist. His name is Irvin Laszlo. He's a Hungarian systems theorist. His son, Alexander Laszlo, is connected with Global Education Futures Forum, um, founded by Pavel Leksha, who is another transhumanist. Uh, so th there's the transhumanism baked in there. Um, in coordination with a gentleman named Julius uh, Stuhlman, now, Julius Stolman had created something called the World Institute uh, in, 19, in the late 1940s and then through the 1950s, something called the Foundation for Integrated Education. And uh, by 1973, he had developed his the theories so much that we would essentially move into a new evolutionary state, both <laughs> Laszlo is saying this and um, uh, Stolman, uh, Julius and his son Stephen Lloyd Stolman, who came later, that we would be evolving into a new phase that was combining man and machine. And um, that we would be engaging in a system that would be like a global brain. 
And I believe very much that this global brain is connected to blockchain and that the intention behind the blockchain mastery transcripts and the blockchain health records is to represent us as digital twins in the blockchain space and to build up this blockchain global brain um, that is coming online. And so um, I think these are really important concepts to understand. Uh, Steven Stolman, uh, Julius's son, uh, they ran a lumber business, so on the surface that's what they were. They were working in the lumber business, but they were involved in a lot of investment opportunities and they were very connected uh, with a variety of people in the New York City that were involved in establishing the state of Israel. And Stephen uh, uh, Stuhlman was uh, the president for a while of the Americans in support of the Weizmann Institute, which was a high-level uh, technology incubator in Israel uh, in the 1950s, and they were early in high-level, high-performance computing and also all sorts of uh, uh, bioengineering and biotechnology. So not too far from where we are, Ancestry.com is over here. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're looking at the intersection of engineering and learning engineering, enge engineering how your mind works, engineering how you perceive the material world, and engineering bodies and material living systems as um, engineering projects um, and, and doing that at the behest of AI and this global brain that increasingly no one will have control of. It will be this distributed system, which is the focus of the conference uh, on Saturday. The focus of the Mormon Transhumanist Association is specifically on decentralization and blockchain and how that presents. So I think all of this, this information going all the way back to the 1940s, this, uh, the Manhattan Project, uh, MK Ultra, uh, designing and engineering consciousness into online education by AI and to what end? And I feel like increasingly it's a post-human end uh, that is a lot of military money behind this, a lot of finance money behind this. and. Uh, people are not aware. People have no informed consent on what is rolling out, and so that's why we've shown up to try to tell this part of the story.